good morning happy new week um first of all sos kebab house amazing but moving on swiftly um so what we you missed yesterday i forgot yesterday was friday and therefore i didn't do a wrap-up or anything because it felt like a saturday um we saw santa obviously because that's why you go to those things it's half the reason you go to garden centers actually this time of year Amelia was not impressed. Last year she was just simply unimpressed. This year she was devastated, <laughs> to be honest. She um, she doesn't like Santa, so there's some work to be done there. Anyway, today I'm here because for the first time in 10 years I've blown the fuses in the flat and I need some new fuse wire. Welcome to another episode of Trophy Stupid Vlog. So this is what I'm doing right now. I'm cocktail making online with Swatch. Completely normal Saturday. So obviously they provided all the alcohols and limes and even the cocktail maker. Good morning, um, happy Sunday. Uh, welcome to lockdown three, which is part three of an unlimited series of the Johnson Incompetence Chronicles. Um, government announced that most of South East England was going to go into a new tier called tier four, which is just lockdown, but they've tried to rebrand it. Um, they announced last night at about four o'clock that it was going to happen at midnight. Of course, it didn't happen at midnight because the legislation wasn't passed in time. It happened at 7 a.m. this morning. No proper oversight, no scrutiny. There we go. Usual sort of story of this. Not to say that it wasn't massively needed, like it definitely is. Like we should never have come down out of lockdown in the first place, but still delivered by an idiot in the stupidest way possible. Anyway, uh, Christmas at Q is cancelled tonight and possibly for the next two weeks which is how long this lockdown is proposed to run until it's reviewed in reality it'll run at least four weeks possibly six if they got any sense uh, but queue itself is open although all the buildings are closed so uh, we are going to join this queue and enter when it first opens at 10 a.m there's something wonderful always about coming into queue when it first opens and knowing that there's no one ahead of you on the path. It's magical. And it's actually quite a nice day today. Once the clouds have passed, it's now blue for a few hours. We're gonna do like an hour and a half wander around and then hopefully go back and Amelia will have some lunch depending on whether she naps or not in this outing. You can see all the lovely light baubles that you may have seen if you've been to Christmas queue. You won't be seeing tonight and possibly won't be seeing any more this year. But hopefully they'll actually resume Christmas queue mid-January, but I don't know. Part of me feels like we should just be honest and write Christmas off and just say, look, it's not gonna happen this year. It's a shame. But it's better that it doesn't happen at all rather than it's all half arses. And then my proposal is that the government introduces a two day bank holiday either side of a weekend sometime in mid June. And uh, as a sort of replacement, summer Christmas, if you will. I'm sure when the dictionaries decide what the word of the year was for 2020, they'll pick something really obvious like pandemic or they'll pick lockdown or quarantine or something of that order or social hyphen distancing. But none of those words actually capture the feeling of 2020, merely just a thing that happened. I think a more honest word of 2020 would be something like waiting or anticipation because broadly most people have been doing what they have to do to stay safe and they're just waiting for the moment 
when they don't have to anymore. They're anticipating future freedoms. And that is the overarching feeling. It's one of sort of current melancholy and future hope. And the balance between those two really, it decides what sort of mental state you're in at any given time. But broadly speaking, it's a year when not, we haven't been able to do a lot and there's been a lot of postponement. And 2021, my God, does that have a lot to live up to, which it's, I'm afraid, really, probably going to fail on a lot of counts. But, you know, it won't be worse. <laughs> That's the thing you can say. But uh, people are anticipating their first proper holiday abroad or the first time they can actually spend some good time with their parents or grandparents. And it's all just a waiting game. Hi, happy Monday, that sarcasm. Um, COVID update. So as of today, about half of all the European countries, most of the bigger ones in fact, have stopped flights for people coming from the UK to their country. So you cannot currently leave the United Kingdom and go to almost any country in Europe, even by Eurostar. That includes our good friends, Ireland, with whom we share an internal border currently, and obviously our closest European country, France, as well as Belgium, Germany, Italy. So things are going well. And the reason, the reason behind it is because um, there is a new strain of COVID people are calling COVID-20, although I don't believe that is actually its name, but um, there's a new strain which is 70 times or 70% more infectious than good old, or rather not good old, and sort of yesterday's news, COVID-19. Um, now, you might say, well, that's not the UK's fault. You know, mutations happen. Yeah, they do. Mutations happen mostly where viruses spread um, extensively and are not controlled the more controlled the virus spread is the less there is a chance of mutation because the less hosts are infected and the united kingdom has handled this terribly and kent especially badly and that is why there is a quite a significant mutation and because of that we can't currently leave the country to go anywhere. Not because our own country says so, which is what it was before, but because all the others do. Turns out all the countries in Europe do have controls over their borders after all. Who knew? The answer to my sarcastic question is, of course, everybody knew that, including the politicians who told you it wasn't possible. Because, as with all things related to the EU, they've been lying since the very beginning. It's just like April all over again kind of strangely reassuring. Hi there, it is Christmas Eve Eve, aka 23rd of December. Uh, today has been me messing around creatively really. You might remember, or maybe you don't, or weren't listening, or I didn't say it, all of those things are possible, that I bought um, a vision mixer uh, off Steve back in the summer. Uh, the ATEM Mini from Blackmagic. It's um, it's a very handy little thing. I haven't really had a chance to play with it properly because in reality, between like, you know, having lots of work and a small child, there hasn't been a lot of opportunities. However, um, now that we're in like full tier four lockdown, Christmas is basically going to be a selection of Skype and Zoom calls and I figured it'd be nice to have a good setup for when those calls have to happen. And one of the problems I have found um, of having lots of video calls with family, especially with a small child, is that they don't stand still long enough for you to easily point a camera at them. And if you're using a phone, so you can, then most people can't see the screen. So this is the whole reason that um, the big F 
um, book has uh, invented the portal, which is essentially a camera that follows you around the room that attaches to your telly or has its own little screen. Um, and the TV one is quite clever, except that my desire to give F book any money at all, or any publicity for that matter, <laughs> is absolutely zero. Um, horrible, horrible company. Um, and yes, I do use WhatsApp and Instagram, and they are useful tools. Very annoying. If I could get away with not using it, I would. And um, I've been on Instagram since long before it got bought by the big F. And uh, yes, so I don't want to give them any more money to buy a camera that follows me around the room. It'd be easy just to have multiple cameras in the room that covered the whole room. I meant that you could keep track of everybody. So that's what I've done today. I've built a little setup in our living room using the ATEM, using a few GoPros. And uh, and then I can put overlays on like nice Christmas uh, edges on the on the frame and all sorts of things to make it nice and festive. So that's uh, that's been my creative output for the morning. Not uh, constructive by most measures, but then I really don't have much work to do between now and January the 14th, 13th. So um, I'm just having fun. Uh, it's a very strange feeling. And uh, now I'm going for a walk to go and see whether there's any food establishments not on the delivery services that we might be able to get over the Christmas period. If you have any suggestions for simple photo sharing apps that I could use instead of Instagram, I would be very interested to know. Um, the obvious problem is that nobody else is on them, so nobody actually sees your photos, but from a just portfolio point of view, it's still quite handy. So let me know if you know of any good ones. I'm gonna try and preempt my perennial problem of not having a word of the weekend and having to write one in text at the end this week by doing a word of the week for Christmas. So as you may know, the modern festival of Christmas has been moved to coincide with other pagan festivals in order to try and spread Christianity around the world a bit. Um, because the birth of Christ was not at the end of December. So the real festival that you're actually celebrating in reality is the winter solstice. And that is the shortest day of the year and um, usually people are very glad when that's passed and the days start getting a little bit longer as they have now um, so and the solstice technically goes twice a year obviously for the summer solstice and the winter solstice um, so let's do solstice as a word of the week that signifies the shortest and longest days of the year so first of all in German the solstice is die Sonnenwende Die Sonnenwende. That is solstice in German. And you can obviously prefix that with summer or winter. And in Italian, it is il solstizio. Il solstizio is the solstice in Italian. So there we go. That is solstice in German and Italian. And that was this week's word of the week. Happy Christmas Eve morning. Just come for a walk. Up to Richmond Hill because it's a beautiful day. Today and tomorrow, weather's exceptional, so we're trying to be outdoors as much as we can. And then it gets a bit sort of crappy and properly wintry after that. So, Crystal's just buying some last minute veg and things in Sainsbury's before heading off to to her Santa Claus, where she drops presents on the doorstep and hits the doorbell. And uh, we are just doing a loop. And then this afternoon, we're hopefully gonna go to, well, we are gonna go to Osterley. Um, and Amelia will hopefully have a bit of a walk there. Because at the moment, she's just in a bag eating crisps. So not the most stressful existence ever, by any stretch. Osterley House and Park on Christmas Eve. We're not the only people to think of this, obviously. Still, it's nice to be here. The weather is holding. 
a bit mixed but and cold but it is flipping Christmas so cold is not too bad. Do you know where you are? You're in Osterley Gardens. Good morning, happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. I've come for a walk in Bushy Park, having done some Santa duties, delivering presents. And because I don't remember Christmas day, it's quite so blue and sunny, I figured we'd come for a walk. You're a very strange duck. <laughs> Charming, I'm sure. Are you gonna um Finish opening it. Do you want some help? What can you give it? Give it to Daddy. Give it to Daddy. You do, you're doing well. That's it. Keep going. Wait. What do you think? Can you say thank you? Have you Christmas dinner? What do you think? Is it good? You're just rearranging it. Yeah. Yeah, it's on your finger. You can lick your fingers. It's allowed. It's Christmas. Amelia, you're going to open it. Go on then. Give it a bonk. Go. Oh, you're done. Take a bow. Encore.